project's resources are almost always limited. There's never enough time to do all that needs to be done. It's a trade-off. So where is your time best spent? And how do you avoid getting caught up in tasks that turn out to have little long-term benefit? So there are actually some swathes of native and weed here. You'll need to prioritise. And this starts with observing your site. The first few weeks, or even months after a fire, is a time for waiting. You need to give the site time to start to recover. But once recovery is underway, and you've been given the all clear to safely enter, go in and have a good look around. Take it carefully though. Exposed soils and regenerating natives are vulnerable to trampling. That's another trade-off, but you do need to know what's going on. Look carefully at your site, so you can work out where to allocate your time. Be realistic about the availability of resources to treat the site. And don't expect to get everything right straight away. You'll be reassessing regularly as post-fire regeneration evolves over time, often rapidly, and as you learn from your experience. When working out your priorities, there are a few questions to ask yourself. Firstly, what's the plant community you're working with? Remember, you're not creating the plant community. You're assisting one to recover. Is it a eucalypt type community? A rainforest? A wetland? A grassland? Or is it a mix of one or more of these? This can help guide which weeds to prioritise and sometimes even which natives to favour. For example, in rainforest and wet eucalypt type forest, some smaller growing weeds will eventually be shaded out when the natural dense canopy recovers. So you could choose to ignore some of these while you attend to some rapidly growing weedy vines that are blocking native recovery. But in a grassland, wetland or woodland, those smaller growing weeds may well be priorities because they can outcompete important low-growing natives. But even then, you may not have to treat them all at once. Just make sure you treat them prior to their seeding, so you can avoid the seed shedding and recharging the weed component of the soil seed bank. We will find stuff. I can see some the next question to ask during this observation stage is, where are the natives regenerating? Because post-fire bush regeneration is all about making sure the site's natives are not outcompeted by weeds. Are there regenerating natives being smothered by weeds? If there are, there's your priority. Go and release them. Our main aim is to give regenerating native plants breathing space. A word about native vines. They're not weeds, but they can grow rapidly and cover large areas particularly in rainforest. They can provide valuable post-fire wildlife habitat and protect the site from exposure, but they may also suppress other valuable native species. So sometimes they need to be cut back to give other plants the chance to get ahead. Another key question. What are the native plants on your site? Gardenia, they're all native. Whatever the situation, so need you'll need to get your eye in for which seedlings are natives and yeah, which are weeds. Or seek guidance on this from those in the know. Just flick it over, done. All good. So, this is a threatened species. Find out if there are any special native One species on the site here. that need priority protection or priority release from weeds. These could include threatened species. Or, if it's a rainforest, they might be species that are able to form a canopy quickly. Now for the weeds. Are there some weeds that need to be treated early? Uh, the camphor laurel here that's really And shot. others that can be left, at least for a while? Some seed bank forming shrub weeds might take years to grow to maturity and flower and fruit, which gives you more time for their treatment. And some weeds aren't that much of a problem. If I had to leave something, it'd be the sisal. Their structure is significantly less than because the they never spread very far, or they're small and short lived and don't compete with the natives. Priority weeds are generally weeds that have more potential to compete with the natives, 
or even act as ecosystem changes. Weeds that can mature and produce seed quickly, especially if dispersed by wind or birds. Weeds that form soil seed banks, but which the fire has depleted through stimulating mass germination. You don't want these to build up even bigger soil seed banks by letting them seed again. And weeds that become harder to treat as they mature. Some weeds can, at times, even be beneficial, at least in the short term. For example, they could be protecting vulnerable regenerating natives from the sun and drying wind, providing habitat for fauna when native alternatives are scarce. In a burnt area, the lack of structure for shelter is a big problem. We can't give up on it, it's all we've got left. And some weeds provide food such as food for insects, which in turn are important food for birds and small mammals. And weeds might provide food and shelter for birds that can help regeneration. For example, if a site's a rainforest, some weed can act as an attractant to birds that might bring native seed in. Although this needs to be balanced with the problems caused by the weed. Finally, on sites where erosion has been a problem, it may be better to have weeds than nothing to hold the soil together. And there will be some areas that are higher priority than others. Weed often follows a pattern. There's often a core of the site that's fairly weed free, while the edges are more weedy, because this is where the weeds invade from. Our job is to help the native core expand outwards. If only a few natives are appearing among a sea of weeds, just weed around these plants. But stop when you run out of natives. Avoid the temptation to focus on the weeds for their own sake, or to start in a weedy section. It's not a priority to treat weeds where there's nothing to take their place. And that is one you really don't want to let get away. Although you may want to flag some particularly invasive species to target weed or de-seed later if you get time before they release their seed and spread. But sometimes weeds can come up ahead of natives. So with the right timing, you may have a chance to broad spray the weeds with minimal impact on the natives, which you're hoping will regenerate later. Now you know a bit more about the options, you'll need to think carefully about what resources you have, then decide on your priorities. How often can you work? And how many person hours are available? Do you need to try and get help from others? If you're really short of time and labour, you'll have to make hard decisions. Prioritise releasing the most important natives across the site. Then come back and prioritise weeds that are the highest threat. Now for some tips and tactics. Be ready to adapt quickly and respond probably repeatedly when and where you're most needed. Keep coming back if you can. Weed control usually requires a series of well-timed follow-up treatments. Identify one or more core areas in better condition, say 20 by 20 metres or whatever size suits, and keep expanding out from these cores into the weedier sections. Grasses, um, Give different weed species a priority cool. rating, which can change from site to site or over time. If you aren't able to treat certain weeds, can you contain them? Consider tactics such as removing flowers and seeds, or installing physical barriers such as silt fences around seeding grasses, or logs around creeping weeds. Ooh, that's a different bird. It's important to keep records. Take photos before and at various stages during your work and keep notes about what is occurring and what plants and animals are returning over time. Tree creeper. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, I think you're right. The white-throated one. Ideally, choose some photo points that you can return to again and again and line up exactly the same scene to create a sequence. 
we're working with nature, so it's complex and not always predictable. While fire adapted species, and even many rainforest species, are showing good signs of recovery, there are some complex questions that you may need to seek further advice on, such as what do you do if recovery is apparently not happening or is very sparse? Or you're not sure what the plant community should be. That complexity and unpredictability is part of why bush regeneration is so exciting. Assisting recovery can be very satisfying and inspiring as well. But prioritising can challenge even the most experienced people. So expect some surprises. And don't hesitate to ask for help. Rainforest species might even be a red ash, but I'm not 100% sure. 